Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Synergy stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Synergy is the only pure play cape size ship owner publicly listed in the US. It provides marine dry bulk transportation services through a fleet of 16 vessels with an average age of 11.8 years an aggregate capacity of 2.8 million dry weight tons. Its customers are Rio Tinto, Vale, Cargill, and many more. It ships coal, iron ore, and other raw materials. Its TCE in the second quarter of this year is up over 300% from the second quarter of last year. TCE stands for Time Charter Equivalent. The way you calculate it, you take the voyage revenue minus the voyage expenses. Cape size ships are the largest dry cargo ships. They are too large to pass through the Suez or Panama Canal, so they have to go through Cape Agulhas or Cape Horn. The company is headquartered in Greece and was founded in 2008. It started trading in 2007 and can be found on the Nasdaq and Deutsche Börse. The supply of ships in the market is highly correlated to the profitability of shipping companies. The cost to maintain the ships is fairly fixed, depending on the age of the ship. The revenue each ship receives can vary a lot depending on the number of ships available. There will always be demand by companies looking to transport raw materials. To transport iron ore within the US or any country is usually done through railroad or by truck. And when you transport raw materials between countries that are landlocked, you can also do it through railroad or truck. But if you need to transport across the ocean, one way to do it is by plane. But it's really expensive since you cannot fit that much coal on a plane. Shipping by vessels is the best option when crossing an ocean. A ship gets scrapped after about 21 years, that's about the average. When the number of ships in the market falls, then the remaining ships are able to charge more per delivery. When a shipping company makes a lot of money, they usually buy more ships to keep growing. Then the number of ships in the market gets too high again. The shipping companies are unable to demand higher prices anymore. This vicious cycle seems to happen quite often in the vessel shipping industry. You almost have to figure out when the supply of ships is low and invest then. When the supply of ships grows, then you need to sell your shipping stocks. Also, when the supply of ships increases and companies lose money, some corporations are squeezed out of the market or are forced to merge with its competitors. Trying to identify the bottom is almost impossible. Some people have been sitting on these stocks for months or years and watching them lose value. I know that it can be very devastating and stressful because when a stock goes down, it seems like it will keep going down. On the flip side, when a stock goes up, it seems like it will keep going up. You have to separate your emotions and just focus on the long-term plan. I know that's easier said than done. Synergy's average fleet age is 11.8 years, which is a little higher than industry average since 62% of bulk carriers are under 10 years old. Older vessels are usually less fuel efficient and more costly to maintain. Also, cargo insurance rates increase with the age of a vessel. As vessels age, market conditions might not justify the added expenses, so scrapping the ship may be the best option. If you scrap enough ships, you may be forced to buy or lease more vessels, which as you know are very pricey. Just something to consider when investing in a company with older ships. Another thing to consider is the price of steel. Since steel prices are at an all-time high, then scrapping old ships may make more sense because the scrap value is higher than when steel prices are low. When steel prices come down, then purchasing new ships is a smart move. You want to try to invest in companies that need to scrap old ships when the steel price is high, like now, and invest in companies that need to buy new ships when the steel price is low. The higher the steel prices are, the more likely a company will scrap its old vessels, which will decrease the total ships in the market, leading to higher profits for all shipping companies. If steel prices doubled, for example, you may be able to make good money in these companies because lots of old ships will get scrapped and new ships will be too pricey, and all of this would lead to less ships in the market and more demand for the active vessels. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 165 million market cap. They're trading at 98 cents a share and they have 168 million shares outstanding. 
Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow in two of the three years. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's negative in 2018, 19, and 20, but positive in a trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's pretty steady, except in 2020. The revenue was lower due to COVID and less demand for their services. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Their big expenses are the cost of fuel for the ships and the cost of labor. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And you can see they had their highest gross profit in the trailing 12 months. Their revenue in the trailing 12 months was 89 million, which was pretty close to 2019 of 86 million. But you can see their cost of revenue decreased a lot. The reason cost of revenue is lower is because they had less vessels than they had in 2019. And the reason their revenue was higher than 2019 is because they could charge more per day per voyage now. Shipping rates are higher. And if they keep going higher, you can expect their profits to increase a lot. Then below that is operating expenses. Depreciation is a big operating expense for this company. Then below that is operating income. And they had their best operating income in the trailing 12 months at $19 million. They paid the least amount of interest on their debt in the trailing 12 months at $11.7 million. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, and they finally had positive net income in the trailing 12 months. The most common way for a stock price to go up is when the company reports positive net income or positive earnings. Same thing. Since they're reporting positive earnings in the trailing 12 months, they might have really good net income in 2021, and their stock price could go up a lot. But sometimes when a company reports earnings that are better than analyst estimates, the stock price goes down. The market is forward thinking. If investors think a company is going to have positive earnings the next time they report their financials, investors will buy the stock, pushing the price higher. And if they do have positive earnings, a lot will sell off and take in the gains. So most investors don't wait for them to have positive earnings. They buy up the stock beforehand in anticipation of positive earnings. But if investors feel a company will have negative earnings, they'll sell off the stock before earnings, pushing the price lower. The best situation for you as an investor is to find companies where people think they'll have negative earnings. So the stock price is pushed really low, and when they report positive earnings, the stock price goes up dramatically. So you want to kind of be a contrarian, do opposite of the market. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. Because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. You can see they don't have the numbers for the trailing 12 months. I also looked through the company's financials and I couldn't find the cash flows for 2021. So it seems like for non-US companies, it's a little harder to find the information than for US companies. But you can see they had positive operating cash flow in 2018 and 19. And 2020 was a tough year due to COVID, so they had negative operating cash flow. And it looks like in a trailing 12 months, they already reported positive earnings. So I think they're gonna have their best operating cash flow. And you can see they invest a lot in CapEx, 31 million, 12 million, and 20 million. Because those ships are pretty expensive. So when they buy ships, that goes in the CapEx. And then it gets depreciated over time onto the income statement. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And that's only positive in 2019, negative in 2018 and 2020. They added about $90 million of stock in 2019 and 2020 combined. When a company adds capital stock, that dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. And overall, they've been paying down debt. They paid down $30 million of debt in 2020. It looks like they issued stock to pay down debt. Let's look at the capital structure, 199 million of equity, 220 million of debt. They're 48% equity, 52% debt. And their weighted average cost of capital, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt is 8.36%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 346 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $295 million. We divide that by 168 million shares. 
and we get a calculated stock price of 175. They're trading at 98 cents, so they're trading at a 44% discount. It is a strong buy according to the model, but it's a really volatile industry. But I do see a lot of positive signs this industry is in for recovery. So I think they're going to have their best year in 2021. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at 249 a share. They're saying the stock is 59% undervalued. Two analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $1.50. This is where the stock has been trading since it IPO'd. So it looks like it was trading over $160,000 for a share. Of course, it was never trading that high. They did so many reverse stock splits that it makes these numbers look so high. So you have to almost kind of ignore the past and think of it as a new company going forward. That's assuming you're bullish on this company and this industry. If you are, then you have to buy the stock and ignore the past. But if you're bearish, then just don't buy the stock. In the past 12 months, the stock peaked at about $2.50. So the stock moves all over the place. The company got this bump up in price when they reported their first quarter earnings. Like I said, investors don't wait for earnings to happen. They drive the price higher. Then when earnings come in, even if they're good, better than expected, people sell off and take in their profits. The stock has gone down 33% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 33%. The 52 week low was 39 cents, the high was 245. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. And this is a pretty popular stock. Three to seven million shares are traded each day. Of the 168 million shares outstanding, 141 million are on float. Only 2% are held by institutions and 5% of the shares are shorted. So you can see how those reverse stock splits really kill your price over time. The stock price is down 99.9% .9 the past five years and over 99% the past three years. But like I said, if you are bullish on this stock, you just have to ignore the past and pretend it's a new company going forward. And it does seem like analysts are bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 85% and their revenue to grow 33%, much better than its industry and the market. In the past five years, their annual earnings increased 12%, which is worse than its industry, increasing 26.5%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $2 today. The Lynn Partners is the biggest shareholder at 5.5%, then Gelco Delta, Savvy Management, Virtue Financial, and Susquehanna Fundamental Investments. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their PE is pretty high at 86. They do have a good price to sales ratio, so they do bring in a good amount of revenue relative to their market cap. Investors spend about $2 for $1 revenue, which is better than a market median and average. A lot of companies in this industry have really good price to book ratios. Their price to book is below 1, it's 0.8. So that indicates they're worth more in bankruptcy than active. If the company filed bankruptcy, it would be able to give each shareholder $1.18 even though each share is currently trading at 98 cents. That is one of the bright spots in investing in a company like this. It does have assets that are worth money. And the assets on its balance sheet are worth more than the value of the company according to the market. In theory, another company can acquire them and sell all the assets and make a profit. So when you invest in an IT company, there's generally no physical assets. Sometimes having physical assets can really help out during a difficult time especially during a cash crunch. They only have a 4% return on invested capital. They can cover their interest payments 1.7 times. That's a bit low for interest coverage ratio. They have a really low ROE at only 1%. And they have $56 million of cash on their balance sheet. And according to their latest balance sheet, they have no current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on Castor Maritime, Nordic, and Top Ships. All in the same industry as Synergy, and if Synergy has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. They're the only company that reported positive earnings. The other companies, we can't look at that P.E. ratio because they have negative net income. All the companies have pretty good price-to-sales ratios. Synergy is a little better than average. All the companies have good price-to-book ratios. Synergy, once again, is better than average. We can't look at that current ratio because they have no current liabilities. They have positive ROE since they have positive earnings. They're a little higher in debt. And all these companies are really small. If you add the market caps for all four companies, it's still under $1 billion. Synergy is similar to Castor Maritime since they both do dry bulk. Tops and NAT are similar since they both mainly transport oil. 
So Synergy looks better than Caster Maritime because they have a younger fleet and they have positive earnings. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 44% discount, but you really have to time this industry right, and I hate timing stocks. I like to buy and hold, but you can't really buy and hold a stock like this because it generally goes down over time. As you can see, it's gone down 99.9% .9 since it IPO'd. But this is a really interesting industry. I used to think it was a shady industry. I think it's a really needed industry. It's just so hard to turn a profit because you get squeezed out of the market when the rates come down and companies lose so much money. So they have to constantly dilute their shareholders or they have to do reverse stock splits. So they stay above $1 share so they can trade on the NASDAQ or major stock exchange. It's a really interesting industry and I'm learning a lot about it. So leave a comment if you have more information about this company or this industry. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10, their revenue 4 out of 10, and their ratios 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.